Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Serp Bros. In this video, we're going to be looking at the domain name system. So the domain name system is more commonly known as DNS. DNS plays a very important role in modern day networking. It's the unsung hero that allows us to use the internet in the simplest way possible. Without DNS, our connected lives would look very different. Let me show you what I mean. The world is full of web servers. Almost 2 billion websites exist today. Websites such as facebook.com, youtube.com, and of course, everyone's favorite, certbros.com. The problem is, web servers like these don't use names like certbros.com. No, web servers actually use IP addresses. This becomes an issue. Being the small-minded humans that we are, we can't process large amounts of IP addresses very easily. Humans are much better at using domain names, such as certbros.com. But web servers can only understand IP addresses, such as 160.153.137.40. Can you imagine trying to browse to websites using the IP address alone? This is why we need something that sits in between us, something that will convert our domain names to IP addresses, almost like a translator. This is where DNS comes in. DNS will take our domain name and then translate or resolve it into an IP address. Let's see how this works. Okay, so this is your computer and you want to go to your favorite website, so you type www.certbros.com. Remember, web servers do not work with domain names, so your computer needs to translate this into an IP address. The first thing it does is check the local cache both on the computer and the browser. There's also a local configuration file that's checked. If there are no cache entries, your computer will send a query to something called a DNS recursive resolver asking for an IP address for certbros.com. The DNS recursive resolver will most likely be managed by your ISP. You can change this to a third party such as Google DNS or even run your own internal DNS resolver. Once the DNS resolver receives your query, it checks its cache. If it can't find an entry for certbros.com, it will send a request to another server. This is called a root server. A root server is at the top of the DNS hierarchy and is the first step in resolving certbros.com to an IP address. There are hundreds of root servers around the world, but they all use one of 13 IP addresses. The job of a root server is to provide the details of top level domain servers. A top level domain could be .com, .org, .net, etc. In this example, the root server will refer us to the top level domain server for .com. So then we query the top level domain server for certbros.com. A top level domain server, or TDL for short, is a server that contains information for domains with a specific extension. In this example, we've queried the .com TDL server. But the TDL still doesn't know the IP address we need. It will, however, know the location of the authoritative name server. We then send our query to the authoritative name server. This is the last step of the DNS lookup. With a bit of luck, the authoritative name server will have a record for certbros.com and it will return the IP address to our DNS resolver. The DNS resolver would then send this IP address back to our computer and now with the IP address, our computer can then speak directly to the web server. And all of that happens in a blink of an eye. So next time a web page is taking a moment to load, just think back to all of these requests happening behind the scenes. So normally, if you're running a packet capture while querying DNS, you will only see the request to the DNS resolver and the DNS resolver's response. The root, TDL and authoritative name server queries are only ever seen from the perspective of the DNS resolver. But in this video, I want to show you the whole process live and in action. The way we can do this is by setting up our own internal DNS resolver. 
So here is my host computer, and it's also a DNS server as well. It's a Windows 2019 server with DNS installed. If I open PowerShell, and I type ipconfig forward slash all, we can see at the bottom the DNS is set to colon colon 1 and 127.0.0.1, which hopefully by now you know is our local loopback address. The first thing I'm going to do is open Chrome and Wireshark. To capture this entire process, I need to be very specific in how I go about this. Because DNS is so darn efficient, I need to make sure that there are no cached entries anywhere. So I need to first clear my browser cache. You can see already I have chrome colon forward slash forward slash net dash internals slash hash DNS open. This page lets us clear Chrome's DNS cache. So after I click that, I now need to clear my computer's DNS cache. I'll open PowerShell again, type IP config forward slash flush DNS. Hit enter and now my computer's DNS cache has been cleared. Now because this is also a DNS server, I need to take another step, which is to clear the DNS server cache. To do this, I type clear dash DNS server cache. But before I press enter, I need to get everything ready. DNS is a very, very quick to start caching entries. And if I let it, it will start to cache TLD servers. So I'll open another tab in my browser and type www.certbros.com. But I won't press enter just yet. Next, I'm going to start our Wireshark packet capture. While that's running, I'm ready to clear the cache and browse to the website. So I'll open PowerShell Backup. I'll move it over so we can see the packet capture. Now I'll press Enter to clear the DNS server cache. It will ask me to confirm by typing Y. As soon as I press Enter, I want to load the website to avoid any chance that DNS will start caching servers. So I'll hit Enter in PowerShell and straight away load certbros.com in the browser. And as the website starts to load, we can see lots of traffic in our Wireshark capture. As soon as we start to see the web page, we can stop capturing traffic. I'll make Wireshark full screen so it's easier to see. There's a lot of information here, so the first thing we want to do is filter the capture to only show DNS traffic. To do this, I'll simply click on the display filter at the top of the screen and type DNS. Now we only see DNS traffic. Because this computer is our DNS resolver, the first entry we see is going to be the query to the root server. We know this because the destination IP address is one of the 13 root server IPs. If we open the transport layer information, we can see that it's sent using UDP to a destination port of 53, which is the well-known port number for DNS. If we close the transport information and now open up the DNS information, then select queries, we can see our request for www.searchbros.com. The request is for an A record. An A record is an IP version 4 address for a domain. If we were trying to find the IP version 6 address, it would be an AA AA record, also known as quad A. Okay, so now if we look down the capture, we should see the root server reply. If we select the reply, we can see the ports have been reversed and now the source port is 53. We can still see the query for serpros.com, but now we have some more information. Under authoritative name servers, we have a list of the .com top level domain servers or TLDs. Additional records show the IP addresses for these TLD servers. The top IP address is 192.5.6.30. If we take a look at the capture again, we can see we sent a request to the top level domain server for serpros.com. Hopefully this process is starting to look familiar to you. If we then scroll down, we can find the reply from the TLD server. The query is still there and the response is listing two authoritative name servers. 
Again, additional records show the IP addresses. We are now at the last step of this process. A bit further down, we can see we sent one last query to the authoritative name server at 173.201.69.22. Again, we are asking for www.certbros.com. The reply is just below. Here we see the query and finally the answer, which is the IP address for certbros.com. If I change the display filter at the top of the screen to ip.addr equals equals and then the IP address 160.153.137.40, we can see the conversation between this computer and the web server hosting certbros.com. Now that our computer knows the IP address for certbros.com, it's going to cache this for future use. If we open PowerShell, type ipconfig forward slash display DNS, we can see an entry for www.certbros.com and the associated IP address. As well as our local computer, the browser and the DNS server will cache this entry to make it easier to find in the future. This video is part of the full CCNA course that can be found in the description so please feel free to go and check that out. That's it for DNS. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.